Hello and welcome to this video for ElectroPages. I'm your host, Robin Mitchell. Today we're here at PCIM Nuremberg 2025 and it's been a fantastic event. And today we're at the Power Integration Stand to look at some interesting power stuff. Now I'm joined by my very good friend, Mike from Power Integrations. Correct, yeah. Thank you for having us today. Now, just before, we, just before we dive into this really cool circuitry, which I believe you designed yourself, just explain to the audience who you are and what you do. All right, so my name is Mike Stoker. I'm a product marketing engineer at Power Integrations. And basically what we are doing I'm doing the whole stuff um, in between everything, like designing the board, being in front of the customers, and that's kind of where my passion is. That's kind of like you're running the whole show then. Yeah, it's, it's, it's a bit of work. So. <laughs> Fantastic. So everything these days is about power, electrification of EVs, solar systems, just anything you can think of, it's being electrified. Question is, what do you guys bring to the table at this event? Okay, so we have a total of five new reference designs, which I'm really excited to talk about. And those right reference designs are kind of like an um, a outcome of us listening closely to the customers. Right. And one of the big things which is happening right now in the automotive market is space and cost. Because a lot of things are moving right now in the automotive sector and yeah. the market is demanding for cost and space. And this is why we came with three different things. One of the exciting points is we are starting showing our knowledge in planar transformers. Yep. So it's really tight and the profile of the whole, whole design is just 12.5 millimeters. Sorry, sorry. So what, what's this component here? I've never seen, is this an inductor? Yeah, so it's kind of a transformer. It's kind of like a- Oh, wow. Can, yeah, so, and the transformer itself and our inner switch uh, sits directly across the isolation barrier. So all of it's reinforced isolated. Oh yeah, look at that. You've got the isolation down here, you've got the trench. No, it's, no, it's basically kind of here. But we are also, also oh, adding some slots to I keep, see, to keep the creepish distances for the high voltage application. That makes, that makes sense. Because this is a high voltage application board, so we are running in between 30 and 1000 volts for this Oh, one. wow. So it's a really wide, wide band gap um, application. Yeah. Oh, so, so just a quick question then. So, yeah, sure. So I'm guessing you've got, you've got traces inside, inside e this exactly, piece there. Exactly. So um, the benefit with all of this, uh, leveraging Planar Transformers, is you don't need the whole wires, the whole bobbin, and you don't need the outsourcing anymore. Mm. You're saving costs and you're kind of removing a lot of headache, which the design engineer had before. Mm. Um, you're getting all the benefits of the space, but you're getting all the cost benefits as well for the whole design. And well, well of course, you know, like you say, you haven't, got to, you haven't got to manufacture an entire core with all the windings on it. You've put the windings into the PCB traces and you've slapped a core Correct. around it. Correct, basically like that. And you're basically, you have the control of the whole process by, the, by yourself. You don't need to outsource everything anymore. Impedance control, you can get that as well, can't Basically, you? Basically, yes. Because if you're designing the PCB, you can use a certain service. You can, can sort of monitor that. Oh, that's actually genius. Yeah, yeah. and That's really clever. And one thing why we are getting the, into this is our own IC, the inner switch, it's a flyback switcher IC. Mm. And even for that one, we have a really new package, yeah. um, which is for the IEC 606 is four standard for automotive compliant. Right. So you don't need any more some, um, so you don't need any more this, um, additional conformal coating, which you would have needed for right. high pollution degree environments. Right. And together with the inner switch and the planar transformer, we are, we are generating really compact and cost efficient designs. This is what I really love about those. Right. Do, you know, do you know, that, that design is absolutely beautiful. I, I, yeah, thank you. It's, it's oh, shining so right now in the market. Look at that design, honestly. I, I just, I, you know, the, for me, it's the transformer and it's the switch. The, I love the fact you've got the isolation there, you've got the trench in there for, for you've got the high voltage, low voltage side, it's isolated. That is actually brilliant. So, so just sort of take us through to this next part of the design. I'm guessing this is sure. a larger version of the, sure. uh, of the design. But bef before jumping into it, just want to mention one thing. Oh yeah. So this design is actually smaller than a business card. This is why I really like. I have to. I have to, I have to mention poor choice of business card. <laughs> that might be a bit. That might be better. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I appreciate white it. on white. Yeah, but, but yeah, it's, but, it's tiny though. It's yeah. very small. But jumping into the next one, so from 18 watts, we are jumping now to 120 watts. And again, for this one, it's really high power. It's, 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 it's designed for replacing the 12 volt battery or even shrinking the 12 volt battery in the EV vehicle because it's where the big cost sits. And customers are looking forward to that. And it's a similar approach, we have really low profile here. And instead of just using a PCB layer, we're using a hybrid solution, like the PCB and Oh, I can some, see, yes. yes yeah, you yes. sold it on top of it. That's such, so, 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 so what was the wattage of this one? Sorry, the power capability of this, sorry. It's quite similar. It's, it's also from 200 volts up to 1000 volts and also reinforced isolated. So we have oh, multiple wow. approaches to get to, to, to a conclusion and to the solution in the end. And, 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 and what's the power rating, sorry? Like in terms uh, of 120 what? watts. 120 watts. So it's 10 amps and 12 volts at the output and I up see. to 1000 volts at the input. 
And and so and so, where would this be used in a vehicle then? Just just like 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 because you mentioned yeah. batteries. So Correct. So, so, so um, today, um, the auxiliary power module takes a lot of energy from the HV battery to the low voltage oh, rail. Oh, you're saying? Oh, so you said they still have a secondary 12 volt the battery that's completely. That, that, yeah. I, you want to eliminate I the see what you're battery. saying. Yes, yes, I get. So in a typical EV, I didn't realize that they actually have a secondary battery that's still 12 volts. So it's like separate from the main high voltage battery. Correct. I didn't realize they had those. Yeah, and that's where, where big of a cost sits. Oh. And by shrinking or even getting rid of that, you're you you're, you're really getting so, beneficial. Hold on. So why do EVs? Have a secondary auxiliary 12 volts. Well, why not just rely on that? On that? Yeah, it, it, you have plenty of reasons. <laughs> of course, one of which you need to get all the energy, right? And the 12 volt battery, it also comes back to, to the combustion engines where you have it for the start. Everything's time. expecting 12 volts and they need a secondary system for a whole. That, Basically, that yes. makes a lot of sense now. Yes. And so, but what you're saying here is that this that's no longer needed if you can have a solution like this because you get rid of the 12 volt battery, which are, they're big and they're heavy. Yes. This thing's got virtually no weight to it whatsoever. Is, I'm guessing it's a lot more efficient as well. Definitely. So um, for those low volt, low, um, this one is actually it go, goes up to efficiency more than 91% efficient. Yeah. And um, over the whole temperature range and at full the load. The whole so, temperature range. Yes. Wow. Well, so we're talking here about minus important. 40 degrees C up to 80, 60 degrees C. Kind of because a lot, because a lot of things I know that is that like when it comes to high power, you have to you have to um, derate the power as you as you go yes. up. But you're saying at 86 degrees or so, that's still going to be doing 120 watts. Yeah, so at 60 degrees, it does 120 watts. Yeah. If at 85 and 105, it will de be derated. Okay, okay, fair. But, but, but still, up to 60 degrees, there's no derating whatsoever. Correct, exactly. exactly. And, and so, like you say, this is going to replace it. I'm guessing this is probably more cost effective as well. Uh, as, of as, as Yeah. This is why it's, why it's so nice to show it to the people because they're really excited about it because the cost effectiveness yeah. is basically where, where all the, all the um, chase is behind. Yeah. Everyone wants to have it cheaper. Yeah. And we are just getting it with, with Planar and our InnoStretch together. Mm. So again, it's, it's, it's the size and it's how much we integrate into, into the product itself. I'm, I'm, kind, of, together. I'm kind of curious. Uh, I'll be honest, I've never ever seen in my life a PCB transformer like that with a mm -hmm. core wrapped around the, uh, the, the PCB less. Is this something that you guys have innovated yourself? Oh, that, that's a good question, actually. So um, it's kind of driven by the market. Everyone wants it smaller. Mm. And we got the question quite early. Mm. And when we showed this, I just had recently a discussion with a big OEM in Germany and they're like, it's like you're one year ahead of us. We were just talking <laughs> about this and I was showing them and it's like, oh, we can just use it as it is. So that's why I'm so excited about it. But it's kind of, everyone's pushing for size and that's where it comes from. It's basically that. I, I tell you what, even for me, it's not even the size. It's the fact that, like you said, you have complete control of the impedances, yes. the trace widths, the number of turns. You know exactly what to expect when you when you design this. Yes. Um, and and of course, uh, when you compare it to a design which uses a physical transformer, you yeah. you just see that the space saving is absurd. Yeah. And it's plenty of headache you're getting out with oh, it, yeah. right? It's not just costs and size. It's and, kind of the and, headache. And you have to find a manufacturer who will produce that transformer for you. Yes. Yes. The outsourcing it's not always that easy. Mm. And. You need to respin everything. You need to have the wires who, who pass the partial discharge, which is kind of like new in this environment. Yeah. But with the PCB itself, you just can control it by yourself. Yeah, that makes a lot of sense. Absolutely, that's absolutely fantastic. So if we move down here, what have we got on display here? Oh yeah, so nice that you're asking about that. So we have three more designs. Yeah. Those are discrete designs. Yeah. Um, and the speci speci speciality about those one is we have really, for this one, for example, it's a quad output design. So it's not only one output, they're three like phases. four. Yeah, it's like, so there's those designs made for driving three high side gate drivers and an emergency supply. Oh. So those are all basic isolated. Uh -huh. So if you look at the schematic, Brilliant. you basically see like four different outputs. Yeah. And again, for this one, it's, it's really nice because it's so compact. You have four outputs, just really tight space. And just because we have our, our InnoSwitch 3 IQ. So <laughs> it's kind of a shining star. That's why I like to talk yeah. about it. That's, that's beautiful, honestly. You, I tell you what, you guys use some lovely PCBs, honestly. It's really... <laughs> Thank you, I appreciate it. Oh, please tell me that's your design. No, not this one, unfortunately. Because ah. <laughs> I tell you what, the, I tell, this is some really nice, honestly. I'm really impressed with this PCB. It looks Thank absolutely... You, yeah. And I still can't get over the fact you've got a transformer core over a PCB to make a transform. That, that's actually, that's brilliant, honestly. It's absolutely brilliant. Yeah. But enough of my fascination. We've got to move down onto these flyback uh, designs here. So where would we see this kind of design? Where would we use this? Okay, so this is a design, it's emergency power supply in the inverter. Mm -hmm. And this was specifically designed to be in environments at 100, running up to 105 degrees C ambient. Right. So also for this one, customer asked for low specific design and we choose the bobbin and the uh, core where we still can maintain low profile. Not mm. as close compared to the Planar transformers, but still it's, it's quite uh, 
mm. create something you can use uh, if, you, if you have the space available. Mm. And now I can see there's one more design down there. Yeah, and for this one, it's similar to the first one I showed you with the four outputs, but this time the outputs are not basic isolated, but they are um, encoupled to each other with common mode chokes. So oh, instead, yeah. oh, it's not anymore it. for the high side yeah. gate drivers, this time it's for the low side gate drivers. Yes. It's because the low side gate driver, you can share the same ground potential. Mm. That's, that, yeah, that, that makes sense. Oh, interesting. But again, it's, it's quite compact, and this is actually one design I made. So <laughs> Very nice, and again, it looks lovely. Now the question is, are you going to replace that with one of these at some point? Um, <laughs> it, it just depends. It depends. If, if there comes a specification, we need, to, we need to get it tighter, we can do it with this one. If it's even further tight and even more cost efficient, we can do it with Planar. It really depends in the end on the needs. Fantastic. Now, now I mean, are, are these solutions that you will sell as a whole PCB on its own, and then that, that, that's what a customer will buy, or are they buying the reference design itself? So, those are reference designs, and we, in the end, we are selling the IC itself. Right. But we are doing all of this to make... To help the, the customer know correct, how to use the IC. Make the design IC. cycle like this. So they can basically copy and paste the design into their PCB itself. Well, to be so we're giving everything away. To, to, to be honest, when, when, I see, when I see work like this, I kind of wonder, are you not in the wrong industry? Should you not be selling these instead? Because <laughs> honestly, this is fantastic. I, I, would, I would thought that there'd be a lot of customers who wanted a pre-made solution like this, so they don't even have to worry about how they're going to put yeah, it all together. Good question. You're not the first one asking that, actually. <laughs> <laughs> can I but, buy this? <laughs> yeah, yeah. But it's not our business. So there, there's business. more behind that. But, but again, it's a really the, good question. But again, the reference design is there. And I'm guessing things like bombs are there, so then yeah. people can then actually, actually we have like 100 pages of reports explaining how we do that, how we derate it, which component we choose, why we choose it, all the waveforms. So it's kind of, we, we want to make it, we want to de run the design with less possible. headache and easy as possible, basically. Yeah. Yes. Because the last thing you want is a customer buying one of your chips and then going, I have no idea how to use this in my design. And then you guys come along and go, and go actually, Correct. that's what you do with it. And someone goes, I'm just going to copy that then. But, but what is happening, the customer having the designs and they're giving us feedback, for instance, yeah. for we need more isolation uh, distance. Uh, we need more functionality. So we are implementing it into our new, into our new ICs. And this one is kind of new. We have the increased creepage distance in between the drain and saucepan. So it's five point ah. one millimeters now instead, and that, instead of three millimeters. And that's giving and that's giving you better isolation in terms of on the high voltage yes, side. Yes. And you're saving additional costs. You don't need any more conformal coating and. Uh, um, you, you're basically compliant to the standards of automotive now. Oh, I have to admit, that's quite unusual for a company to do because um, packages are all, always, sta always standardized, right? And I've never heard of a company going to a customer saying, what's your feedback? Oh, the pins are too close. And then you guys go, well, okay, we'll make a new package, make it wider. Yeah. So, so, so that would be a new package. Yeah, and that's why I love my job because oh. the company is big but it's not as big, so I can still run You've into the, the freedom. CEO's office. You've got the wiggle room, yes, you can, can still st do things that are still, unusual. Correct, I can go into the office of my CEO and say, we need this change, and yeah. it's still possible. And, and again, and, and, and that's something which I've seen from a lot of businesses, which is that the, if you're too big and got too many hands in the pot, it becomes it's hard to innovate, it becomes hard to change with that's time. That's my experience as well. But you guys, yes. customs on the line, he wants certain design, change, uh, change layout, and it's done. And it's, honestly, it's, it's absolutely fantastic to see. And I'll tell you right now, between you and me, this is some of the best stuff I've seen here today. So I'll tell you right <laughs> Love now. Love to hear that. that that's, going to be just, that's going to be gone in a minute in my pocket, honestly. Um, I keep it for now. <laughs> <laughs> I keep it for now, yes, absolutely. So just before we wrap up this video, I've got one more question for you. Of course. For the audience who are watching this video, if they want to get involved with power integration solutions, what would you recommend that they do? Okay, so of course the easiest way is typing in the browser power.com. So it's quite straightforward. And yep. you can see, you can find everything there, everything, everything wherever. But if you have already contacts with your with some power integrations uh, colleagues, I always recommend go to the salesperson, the nearest salesperson, FAE office that you know. But if you want us to have a straightforward power.com, it is. Fantastic. Thank you ever so much for taking the time. Well, I appreciate it. It was nice to talking to you. You too. Thank you ever so much.